Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Before we get to the report, if you like our style of video and analysis, feel free to show support for Football Game Plan by dropping by our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan and leaving a little something in the tip jar. Every little bit helps us as we continue to improve the quality of our videos and the coverage we enjoy bringing you guys each and every time we put out a project. Thank you again for your support. Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Laquan Treadwell out of Ole Miss is our number one rated split in or X receiver prospect in this year's draft class. He's a guy that has elite level hands and is an excellent route runner. He's also able to work every quadrant of the field, the short area, intermediate zones, and also deep down the field. Now, he can struggle versus press coverage because of his hand placement. I think he leaves his chest exposed at times, which allows defensive backs to get in there quickly and be effective in controlling him at the line of scrimmage. Again, at times. He's not as sudden as you would like. He's more of a build-up speed type of a guy, but he's still money on back shoulder catches. The contested catches he's able to make with ease. He has A-plus effort in the blocking department, and he's also very physical after the catch and reminds me a lot of Andre Johnson of the Indianapolis Colts. I'm a big fan of Josh Doxson's game out of TCU. Reminds me a lot of Michael Floyd of the Arizona Cardinals. He's very strong at the catch point. He's also strong after the catch. He has underrated game speed and acceleration. And this is a guy that I think needs a little bit of polish in the route and release department. His hands versus press, he has to learn to keep it compact and not swim wide over. Otherwise, you give up your chest and guys can get in there and control you. And his footwork off the line of scrimmage does need a little bit of work. But he also has above average hands. He can play the small or big game and he can work inside or out. Repeat, this is not a drill. Rashad Higgins out of Colorado State is a guy that I think has very good veteran savvy at the position. He really understands zone coverage. He leans into the defensive back before breaking in or out. He also used that subtle push off that chicken wing, we like to call it, to get separation. He's a smooth glider and has above average hands. Now, his release has to get a little bit cleaner as well as his route running, and I don't think he's as explosive as you would like, and he's just an okay vertical threat but this is a guy that i think has a very good short intermediate game and again plays a lot like roddy white of the atlanta falcons the tape coming out of southeast missouri state on paul mcroberts is excellent here's a guy that has multiple ways of getting off the line of scrimmage he can win with strength and or quickness also has those excellent hands that you want and great body control he tracks the football very well but i don't see the burst that you want to see from elite level prospects if he doesn't win at the line of scrimmage he'll have issues separating as a pro i believe but he has good enough run after the catch skills he's smooth he has very good route running skills and is coming off an excellent week of practice at the senior bowl plays a lot like brian quick of the st louis rams Michael Thomas out of Southern Miss reminds me a lot of Hakeem Nix. Here's a guy that plays a lot bigger than his size. He's listed at 6'1", 200 pounds, but it seems as if he's 6'4", 215. He has above average acceleration. He's strong and physical at the catch point. He's also able to make those over-the-shoulder catches with ease and is good on those seam, post, and streak patterns. Now, he has marginal agility. He has to work hard to really break down and get in and out of his breaks. I think he's strictly an outside the numbers type of a receiver, and those shorter routes definitely need a lot of work. But he has the upside that you look for. He also has the ability to stack the, a defensive back. But I do think he has more than enough talent to see the field early as a rookie. Geronimo Allison out of Illinois had a really good week of practice at the Shrine game, then got elevated to the Senior Bowl, had a solid week there. He has an upside, only two years at the FBS level. He's a smooth route runner, strong hands, and is a natural hands catcher. I'm sorry. He has also above average acceleration. He really can eat up that cushion. Now, he lacks the strength. He can get rerouted off his routes. He's not overly sudden as a prospect, as a receiver getting off the line of scrimmage. But like I said, he has that upside only two years at an FBS program after transferring from a JUCO. But in my opinion, he has more than enough raw skills to where he graded out as a fourth round prospect. Aaron Burbridge out of Michigan State is a solid prospect coming out of the Big Ten this season. 
He's very good at contested catches. He's also showing really good nuance with his route running and body control and has dependable hands. Now, he's not overly explosive or sudden, and he will have issues with separation as a pro. He's very physical at the line of scrimmage, but I do think he has okay athleticism. Overall, a solid receiver prospect that rarely drops anything. It reminds me a lot of Brian Hartline. One of the biggest sleepers in this year's draft class is Andre McCullough out of Rocky Mountain College, an NAIA program. Here's a guy at 6 feet 202 with tremendous explosiveness and burst in his route running. He can really eat up that cushion and break in or out of his breaks with explosiveness and has very good hands. He's comfortable catching the football away from his body, over his shoulder, and also making contested catches. Now, where he has to get better, he saw a lot of off coverage in college, so he's going to have to get a lot better at getting off bump press in the pros. I do think he's an X receiver. I like the way he's able to play the physical game in his route running and when the ball comes his way. I just don't think he has enough shiftiness side to side to play inside as a slot receiver or an F receiver, but I do like his potential moving forward. He has the upside that you look for. Nelson Spruce out of Colorado is very good off the line of scrimmage. He really plays the physical game very well. He can work inside or out. He fights for the football. He's good in and out of his breaks as well and is a very solid route runner. Now, he's not overly explosive. I think he's also a little iffy in the catching department. I think he has those concentration lapses, which causes him to drop the football. And I also believe he will struggle to separate with consistency. But I do like the fact that he's a physical player. He's a tough guy and plays a lot like Cecil Shorts of the Houston Texans. Sharon Peak out of Clemson, I thought, had a very good week of practice at the Senior Bowl. He has above average route running ability. He has solid to above average hands, and he plays with a level of smoothness to his game that you see from a 10-year vet. Now, he can use a little bit more strength, especially at the catch point. At times, he tends to get bumped off that catch point. He has marginal explosiveness and has to develop catching nuance, which means he has to learn how to catch from multiple different angles. Now, he is position diverse. He can play inside or outside, and I do believe he has that upside that you look for. If I had to compare his game to somebody, it would be Seth Roberts of the Oakland Raiders. Kiaris Garrett out of Tulsa reminds me a lot of Andre Holmes of the Oakland Raiders. For a guy his size, he really runs very good routes. He knows how to play big and use his frame by walling off defensive backs and posting him up. He also has good acceleration and is very tough to bring down once he brings in the football. Now, I think he kind of has clumsy feet. His hands are okay, and he has adequate body control. He's always stumbling over his feet, which causes him to lose body control and drop a football. I also believe he has average explosiveness. But again, when the guy definitely gets going, he definitely can play big. I also believe he has some value as an inside F receiver also. So I do like Kiaris Garrett's game and definitely is worthy of a fifth round grade. Chris Brown out of Notre Dame, I believe, had a fabulous week of practice at the East-West Shrine game. He has great hand-eye coordination. He's a natural hands catcher and shows a wide catch radius and is also not afraid of contact going over the middle of the field. But I don't think he has that burst and explosiveness that you want to see from an elite-level prospect. He also doesn't accelerate out of his breaks on deep in-breaking routes. I think he tends to round those off and drift out of those cuts. Separation could also be an issue as a pro, but he is a dependable receiver. He catches everything and also can win at the line of scrimmage. Really good prospect coming out of the Big Sky Conference this season in Madison Mangum out of Idaho State, a guy that really plucks the football out of the air. I think he has a great set of hands. He gets a really good release off the line of scrimmage each and every time. And with that said, he'll struggle to stack defenders because of his marginal acceleration. Despite the good release, I think he still needs work in that area, especially with his hands as far as getting off bump press and also trying to really accelerate and stack the defensive back to give his quarterback more room to throw the football. But he does have solid quickness in and out of his breaks. I think he is able to play inside or out and plays a lot like Willie Sneed of the New Orleans Saints. Alonzo Russell out of Toledo plays a lot like Dontrell Inman of the San Diego Chargers. He has great acceleration into his routes. He has the ability to work well is in the seam area and also down the field. I do believe he's a solid route runner, but he has to get stronger. He can't allow himself to get big boyed in routes at his size at the catch point. You know, he has OK hands, but I think his drops come from lack of strength and also concentration. So he has a little bit to work on, but he does have enough raw skills and tools that you will take a flyer on him somewhere in the draft. 
Chris King is a guy that you should definitely keep an eye on out of Duquesne. I really like his ball skills and his ability to fight through contact. He does a great job getting off the line of scrimmage. I think where he has to get a little bit more consistent in doing is exploding in and out of his breaks. He does a great job going straight line. I think when you look at his game in totality, getting improvement in that area, making him work more inside as opposed to just going down the sideline, I think that's an area where he can definitely grow his game. So like I said before, he has that upside, and we will do a film session breakdown on his game to show you why he's one you should definitely keep an eye on. Another underrated prospect to keep an eye on in his draft class is Jarvis York out of Delta State, a Division II program down in Mississippi. The Statesmen do a great job down there in playing offensive football. I think York's game definitely translates to the NFL. I love what he could do pre and post catch. He really gets good explosiveness in and out of his cuts. He does a great job after the catch when he has the football in his hands. Now where he has to get better, I think he has to find ways to become a little bit more consistent in reaching out for the catch. At times, you'll see the ball get into his body too often and in the NFL, that can cause issues. I think he also has to work on his releases, whether it's quickness or with strength. I think he has to become a little bit more consistent in that area, but I do liken his game to Greg Jennings. You can see someone like Quinshot Davis having a very long NFL career because he does a lot of things very well. Nothing particularly great, but does a great job in just being solid. What I like about his game is that he completely works well on the outside, which is why he's in our split in rankings. Now, he's not the most explosive or dynamic receiver, but he's consistent. I think he has been a very productive player for North Carolina throughout the course of his career. I think he has to get a little bit stronger. He has to become a little bit more nuanced in his route running. But if I'm a team in the NFL, I'm hard pressed to pass on the production and the consistency that he brought to the table game in, game out. Andrew Kelly out of Cutstown jumped onto the scene this past weekend when I was at the Baltimore Regional Combine. He was a guy that I marked down as I have to go back and watch more tape of him because I hadn't seen him play throughout the course of his career. Went back, checked the tape, and he ends up on our split in X wide receiver rankings list. A 6'3, 210 pound wide receiver ran a 4'4 flat at the Baltimore Regional Combine. And when you check out his film, you can see he's a straight line athlete. He's a big body guy with tremendous hands and definitely knows how to play the big and small game. I do think he has some ability to play inside, but he's not a shifty guy. He's not a quick guy or a sudden guy. He's more of a build up speed type of a player. So I do think there's some room for growth in his game. They didn't throw the ball a lot at cuts down. If I had to compare his game to someone, it would be Donovan Morgan who plays wide receiver for the LA Kiss of the Arena League. Outstanding receiver that was going along the same type of trajectory. Started at UL Lafayette, went down to Pearl River Community College, played with the Texans and Jets, and now is in the Arena Football League where he has torn it up and will be a AFL Hall of Famer. But I do think King can find a home in the NFL because of his size, because of his skill, and what he brings to the table from a growth standpoint.